Hi, uh, in this video, we're going to look at the second part of the conjoint uh, analysis example. So we've already designed the experiment, tested it, uh, ran it so that we have the preferences. We estimated the part worth, and now we're going to go over to Tableau and start our analysis uh, of the part worth data. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in the data from our part worth analysis. So the file we're going to bring in is going to be called conjoint underscore part worths. And when we open it, we'll see that it is for each of the respondents, it is their part worths for the different attributes and levels. So let's go ahead and start our analysis by going over to sheet one. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to create an average attribute part worth table to look at the average values of each of the attributes. Now, there's a lot of values here, so we're going to go ahead and just add them all uh, to the table. So we're going to add the measure values to the columns, and we'll add the measure names to the rows. Now, we're going to then go back and clean it up a little bit. So we'll hit the drop down for the measure names and choose edit filter. Now we're gonna go ahead and drop out all of our baselines that we don't need here. So our baselines, uh, if you remember, are the $0 um, shipping, $150 price, 0% restocking, seven days, the Chestnut Ridge brand, and we don't need the count uh, of the number of rows. So when we do that, we see that uh, it shrinks a little bit in terms of the number. So let's go ahead and make this a little bigger. So we'll choose entire view. And we can make this in the same order that uh, we had previously. So the first thing in our order are the brands. So that's the app. Uh, well, let's go ahead and put the intercept up first. Then we'll do the brands, the Apple, Fitbit, Samsung brands. Uh, next on our list is the shipping. So that's already there, 10 and 20. Remember the baseline is, is not here. Uh, the next on our list was the restocking fee. So that should be 5%, then 10%, then 15%. After that, we have the number of uh, days. So that's the 14 and 21. And then we have the prices 200, 250, and 300. All right now, these are the sums. We want to make them the averages. So we'll go ahead and, and click the first. We'll hold down Shift and click. So it'll highlight all of them. We'll change these from sums to averages. Let's go ahead and add the values to the table. To do that, let's choose analysis and we'll show the mark labels. So now we can see the values here, right? And then finally, we can um, uh, name this sheet. So we'll name it the average attribute part worths. So now we have a table where we can look at, on average, how people evaluate the different part worth. So remember, the intercept is capturing uh, the base case. Um, then we see how much do each of these different levels deviate from that base case. All right, so that's the first step. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the average uh, attribute importance measure. So which attribute is the most important in terms of when it changes its level creates the most shift in people's utility. So to do that, we'll go ahead and open another sheet. Now, from here on, we're going to have to be creating uh, a number of calculated fields. So I've gone ahead and I, I have the the book open and I'm going to copy over these different calculated fields. We have a number of them. Uh, but for this first one, we're going to look at the average attribute importance at the attribute level. So to do that, uh, we are going to create some calculated fields. 
Our first calculated field is going to be called brand. And in this case, what we're looking at is we're looking at the maximum utility for one of the brands minus the minimum utility for the brands. And we want to see the difference between the maximum and the minimum. The next calculated field we're going to create is going to be called shipping. Again, we're going to look at the maximum minus the minimum for the different shipping costs. The next field we're going to create is called restock. So here we'll look at the maximum minus the minimum utility for the different levels. Then we'll create one that's called return days. And here we have again the maximum minus the minimum utilities. And the last one we're going to create is going to be price. Okay, so we've created our five uh, attribute importance measures. If we want to put them on the chart here, again, we can do it by dragging measure values to columns. We'll drag measure names to rows. We'll edit the filter. Now, this will be easier just to say none. This will get rid of all of them. And then we scroll down and find the five that we want. So brand, price, restock, return days, and shipping. Okay. Now, uh, these are, make them a little bigger. We'll change standard to entire view. We'll go ahead and these are the sums. Let's go ahead and highlight. So we'll click there, hold down shift, click to highlight all of these measure values. We'll change them from sums to averages. Uh, we'll go ahead and add the values to the chart. So analysis will show mark labels. And then we can change the title here. This is the average attribute importance. So what we see here is that the bar that's the biggest here, which is price, is deemed the most important, uh, which means that if we change price from the lowest desirable price, which would be the high price in this case, to the, to the most desirable price, which would be the lowest price, we get the biggest swing in utility. Uh, brand, by changing brand, we get the smallest swing in utility, right? So this tells us our average attribute importance. The next step is if we wanna see these in terms of percentages. So let's go ahead and open a new sheet. We're going to create average attribute importance percent measures, which will let us see to what percent of the total do each of the attributes, uh, are they important. To do that, we're going to create another set of calculated fields. So this time we're going to create them as brand percent. And in this case, this is just going to be the average for the brand divided by the total, the average of the others. We'll create one for shipping percent. We'll create one for restock percent. We'll create one for return days percent. And lastly, we'll create one for price percent. So now we have these percentages. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll drag measure values to columns. We'll drag measure names to rows. 
We'll edit the filter. Again, we'll select none. Now we can scroll down and pick all of the measures that have percents next to them. Now here we'll make the picture again a little bigger. We'll change to entire view. Uh, these are in percentages, so we don't have to change that. Uh, we can uh, add the marks to the outside. Now they're in decimals. If we want them to be in percentages, we can click format. And here we'll just change to percentage. Then we have to actually do that for each. Okay, so now we have percentages. Lastly, we can add the title here. This one is the percentage average attribute importance. So again, we'll see the same look in terms of price being the most important, but now we've measured that price represents about 20, little over 29% of the shift of utility that comes from its change of, of price attribute, whereas brand represents about eight and a half percent of the shift in utility. So it says that if you want to change people's preferences, the easiest thing to do is to change the price. The second is to change the restocking, then return days, then shipping, and then lastly, changing the brand changes people's preference. All right, so now that we have the attribute importance, the next step that we're going to do uh, is to calculate the willingness to pay. So again, we'll start by going to a new sheet. So here we're again going to have to create a series of calculated fields. Uh, so let's go ahead. Our first calculated field we're going to create is going to be uh, we're going to create a willingness to pay for each of the features. So the first one will be the willingness to pay for the Apple brand. And for each of these, the willingness to pay is just going to be the utility you get by adding Apple relative to how much utility changes for a given price amount, right? So we're going to look at the change of utilities from the prices from $150 to $300. And knowing that that's a $150 change in price, and we're going to calculate now the as utility changes for Apple, how much is a utility unit worth in dollars. So we'll do that for the Apple brand. Let's go ahead and do that for Samsung. Again, using the same type of formula. Here we're just going to look at the average utility of Samsung. We'll do that for Fitbit. We'll do that for ten dollar shipping. Do it for the $20 shipping. Do it for the 5% restocking fee. We'll do it for the 10% restocking fee. The 15% restocking fee. And we have two for the return days. We have the willingness to pay for 14 return days. And we have willingness to pay for the 21 
return days. Now you notice we do not do willingness to pay for the base case because these are all willingness to pays relative to the base case. And we do not do willingness to pay for price because that's what we're utilizing to figure out how price changes and utilities of price changes can be translated into utility changes for these others. So again, to, to visualize this, we're gonna move the measure values to columns. We'll move measure names to rows. We'll edit the filter. We'll start by removing everything and we'll go down and now we can select all of the willingness to pay measures. And we can do a little bit of, let's see, it looks like they're all in the right order, except for restock. 5% needs to move up. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and make this view a little bigger. Uh, let's go ahead and add the labels. Now these are all prices, so we can go ahead and change these if we want. We can format them and call them currency. And we walk through each of these. All right, so now what we see is, let's go ahead and call this, this is the table that's going to measure the average willingness to pay for a feature. And we can see here relative to the base case, for instance, Apple doesn't have much of a brand difference. So the base case remembers our Chestnut Ridge case. So people are, not willing to pay much different. Uh, they're willing to pay a little over $14.5 more for Fitbit, a little over $19 for Samsung. You can see here that uh, going from a zero to 5% restocking fee is uh, slightly undesirable, but as you make it a 10 and a 15% restocking fee, it becomes much more undesirable. Uh, having uh, more return days is desirable. Uh, having higher shipping costs is less desirable, right? The willingness to pay goes down. So at this point, we're going to stop uh, in this part two of this series. And now in this part, we've now seen how do we measure average attribute part worths? How do we measure the importance of the different attributes? And then the third thing we looked at is how do we measure willingness to pay for the different features. In part three of the series coming up next, we're going to look at how do we actually use those uh, uh, attribute part worse to compute market shares. So we're gonna look at three different products in the market, compute their market shares, and then introduce a hypothetical product uh, and then look at their market shares as well.